Wings and I started flying about the same time, about 15 years ago. Wings flies by uh, providing grants and empowering programs for women and children. And I fly by bicycle. And it has let me do more and stretch more and, than I ever thought that I could. I've learned that it's never too late to say yes to something. And that by committing to my task, getting help when I need it, finding a spark of humor in the hard work, and working and connecting with others, it can come about. We'd, and that sounds kind of like what WINGS members do to bring together their magnificent programs that empower people. Those working together, humor, hard work, and committing. I started these bicycle rides, I call them my destination bike rides, in 1999 when I turned 60. And before that I hadn't done much more than ride my bicycle across Northfield. On these specific rides since then I've ridden over 17,000 miles. I've ridden from California to Florida, from the, uh, uh, Virginia to Oregon, from Washington to Fargo, and then the next year from Fargo to Bar Harbor, Maine, down the Pacific Coast, down the Mississippi from Lake Itasca to Hannibal, Missouri, around Lake Superior, which is a really big lake. <laughs> And, um, oh, I rode to my 50th high school reunion in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And that came about from hearing Patsy Opog, Wings member Patsy Opog, saying something about wishing she was could or planning to ride to her college in, uh, uh, in Iowa. And that she'd always gotten there as a student by bus or by car, and she thought it would be very cool to get there under her own steam. And I certainly connect with that, because it is very satisfying. So I was thinking, hmm, I wish I'd gone to school in a state that was closer, because <laughs> I went to school in Wyoming, high school and college. And I wish I'd have started thinking about this when I was younger. And Bob, who's my very supportive husband, said, you know, just do it. You can take as long as you need. I will be your SAG driver. I will ride, drive the car and, and support you on your way. And so we did, and I did. And I rode 900 miles to my 50th high school reunion. And let me tell you, it is very cool to arrive at a 50th anything on your bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm amazed at the miles that I've covered, because I'm not particularly athletic. I've just figured out that if I sit on a bicycle seat and pedal, and I pedal for a long time, as long as it takes, I can cover the miles. And that is very satisfying. Each of my trips has been its own journey. I don't have a favorite. I have not liked every day. Some days I haven't liked at all, and I think that's part of any journey. With the riding, I've learned that in addition to my physical body being ready to go, you know, strong legs, lung capacity, seasoned backside, um, I need imagination. I spend a lot of time on a bicycle seat. I'm quite a slow rider. So I need some kind of imagination to keep me engaged with my ride. And what bubbles up for me is uh, lyrics to make up some sort of funny bicycle song. <clears throat> I get to bike all day. Sometimes I call it play. I've learned that I can do more than I ever knew. My rides are never fast, yet all the miles go past. I always come in last. Still, I can bike. <laughs> <laughs> I have two birthdays that are very significant in my bicycle life. One was my 12th birthday on March 13th in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I got my very first bicycle. 
My mother thought I was finally big enough to ride an adult bicycle, and so I could have that bike for the rest of my life, and that was, that was good. And then the other important birthday is the year that I was going to turn 60. When I was about 59 and a half, I started thinking about this decade birthday that was coming up, and it seemed really big. <laughs> And I wanted to celebrate it in some way. And I didn't want a party. I wanted some kind of adventure, some kind of challenge that I could probably handle. I wanted it to be focused. I wanted it to be fun. And I wanted it to be mine. I think I wouldn't have named it so dramatically at the time. And as I've thought back, I think I was feeling kind of flat and small in my life, and I needed to break out of that. I wanted to break out of that because I was afraid I'd stay in that smallness forever. My outside life didn't really show that. I'd gone to massage school when I was 45. I'd established a successful massage therapy business, and I had lots of clients who were very grateful and very loyal. I'd accomplished some things on my own. Still, I was letting myself be kind of drugged down by old, old smallness messages. And let me give you an example. When I moved to Northfield <clears throat> in the olden, olden days, I came here as a faculty wife. And we newbies were invited to tea. And over tea, we were to tell what our academic degrees were. <laughs> and. I didn't have any academic degrees. I'd left college early. I'd married. I'd had instant babies and had four babies. And, and that was my life. I didn't have degrees. And I left that event feeling not quite enough for my community. And I let that hang around for a long time. I think I'd put a lid on what I thought I could, could do. And I became accustomed to that lid. You know, dreams are kind of hard to talk about. I think as women, very often we get swept up in facilitating somebody else's dream. When my children were about um, middle school aged, I belonged to a group of women, a small group, and we were invited to share our dreams for ourselves at one meeting. And I didn't have any dreams for myself. I had a lot of dreams for my children. But I didn't have any dreams for myself. And, but now, as I was getting close to 60, that lid was starting to slip. And I had descriptors of what I wanted. I wanted adventure. I wanted a challenge that I could handle. I wanted it to be focused and fun and mine. And I didn't know what it was going to be. I saw a little ad. It said, uh, cross-country bicycle ride, women over 50. Riding from California to Florida starting on March 13th. Oh, March 13th. Somebody was planning my birthday adventure. It was even starting on my birthday. So I signed up, made a, a down payment. And making that choice was the seed of the dream for me. I was riding, hoping to be, planning to be strong enough. I told my family. I have four adult children, and two of the men happened to be together when I told them that I was planning on celebrating my 60th birthday by riding from California to Florida on my bicycle. <laughs> you should have seen their faces. <laughs> One of the men said, do you have any idea how far that is? <laughs> the other man said, if you do even a third of those miles, you'll have done a great job. <laughs> well, he didn't realize that he had just thrown me the gauntlet. I was going to do that ride big time. So I had signed up, made my down payment, and way beyond my down payment, I had paid for it. And I was riding in this basement, because this was winter time now in Minnesota, and planning on being strong enough to handle the trip. And I started waking up <laughs> in the middle of the night, terrified. What if I had made a mistake? What if I couldn't handle the trip? 
I was terrified. <clears throat> I woke up night after night. Finally, one night, I said, okay, what's the bottom line here? And the bottom line had two parts. I needed to have paid my money, done that, all of it, and I needed to be able to ride a bicycle. Well, I could do that. So I guess I was going to be okay. Still, I was pretty nervous. On the day I left Northfield, my good friend Linda Wagenbach came to the door with a little good luck gift, and she gave me a big hug, and I burst into tears. <laughs> Linda said, you don't have to go, you know. And I said, oh, yes, I do. I do for me. <laughs> And that was true. I needed to honor my commitment to myself. Then when I was actually dropped in San Diego, I was scared again. I, my courage had just fled. And even to this day, thousands of bicycle miles later, I still get pretty nervous when I'm going to start a trip. And then once I'm riding, I know this is an adventure that I want. Now I'm 75 until March, when I'll be 76, and I still love to do bike trips. Last summer, I rode the state bike ride in Wyoming. Uh, it was a beautiful loop. It was up Wind River Mountains, Togarty Pass, in front of the Tetons, Hoback Canyon, fantastic, gorgeous. I love it. So I'm sure I'll sign up for another trip. And uh, let me tell you about my signing up for trips. Even though I know that I like them, I question, is it okay? Is it okay to spend that much money? Is it okay to allocate that much time? Is there anything worthwhile? I mean, it's kind of crazy because I know that that physical activity and the strength I gain by riding daily for long hours, I really like that. It makes me feel like I'm living my life full out. So, but I have to talk to myself quite a bit. And finally, I sign up again. I make the commitment. I'm nervous and always hopeful. And then when I start writing, I remember that this is the way I honor myself, whether or not I'm marking a birthday. <clears throat> Gonna take a little bike and journey. Gonna start that trip today. Boom, 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 boom. Gonna take a little biking journey. Gonna cross the USA. <laughs> In 2012, I rode down the Pacific Coast, and that was the hardest ride I had ever done. I thought I had bicycle rides pretty much figured out. I'd been on a lot of them. And this one had hills up and screaming hills down day after day. And we were riding from north to south. That's a good thing to do in October if there's any wind. It's at your back. And north to south on the Pacific Coast means you're on the drop-off <laughs> side of the continent on roads that might have some shoulder and often don't have any shoulder at all. This was the first year that this company had run the trip, and they had planned mileage that was way too long for the terrain. Everybody was having a hard time. I was sending out a daily email, something I try to do on my bike rides. I was being really positive and telling not very much. And one of my sisters wrote and said, your tone is very odd. <laughs> Do you like this trip? <sighs> I didn't answer her because no, I didn't like this trip. And I didn't want to have to admit that I didn't like this trip. I mean, I was, I was doing my dream. I was riding a bike trip. I was doing my dream. And, and I'd committed to it. And, so how was I going to make it work? I, I talked to myself a lot. And I said, you know, Lynn, you can ride or walk every single mile and end up exhausted and 
martyred and essentially miss what the trip is. Or you can get off your high horse or your high bicycle seat and just go ahead and take the, some of the help that's just right here. You might get into the van and go out 10 miles in the van on a 90 mile day or get in the sag wagon at the end of the day to be driven into the last few miles to the motel. And I could be authentic. And that was amazing what being authentic meant for the success of that trip. So I, I made some changes. Some of them were real changes, a whole lot of them were attitude. And I can tell you, I really did like that trip down the Pacific Coast. I found on that trip that if I could bring humor to my day, it would be so much better. So it was on that trip that I started sharing my funny bike songs. The <clears throat> directors of the program uh, gave me a little slot of time after dinner. My bike buddies were willing to listen and then we all laughed together and it helped diffuse the difficulty of the day, how hard we'd had to work and it gave a perspective and reminded us, one of the things that reminded us was we have a new chance tomorrow. Who knows what it will be? It will just be. And that was very, very helpful. Here's one of my silly songs. The cars came on from front and back. They came around the bend. I thought that there would be a break, but there was just no end. I pedal up, I pedal down, because I know how to do it. Then when I had gone so far, my bike legs said, Oh, screw it. Bumpty da la la dumpty dum. Bumpty da la la dumpty dum. I gratefully got in the car with the driver of the sag. She put my bike upon the roof while I dealt with my bag. She drove me into this hometown so I could cease to lag. I'm grateful to have been brought in when my energy's a drag. <laughs> my longest trips have been with a company that does bike trips for women. The company takes care of everything. They plan the route, they have route sheets and maps, and they arrange the lodging and the food, and they carry your bags in the trailer. I've never been on a cruise, but I imagine it's like you know, this, my bike trips are kind of like a cruise, except I get to pedal. <laughs> the company takes care of everything. Still, you need to ride for yourself. And I ride at my own pace. I talk to myself. I coach myself out loud on long days. I count my way up hills. I ride in all kinds of weather, cold and hot and rainy and windy and wind is really hard. When I crossed Texas, we had a headwind for two solid weeks and it was demoralizing. Except the thing that kept it from being totally demoralizing is it was spring in Texas and there were wildflowers blooming all along the roads and that was marvelous. So, <clears throat> Biking is great in that you can eat a lot, and if you like peanut butter, a bike trip is heaven. There is peanut butter at every sag stop, every snack stop, peanut butter, peanut butter. A cyclist stood at the side of the road, so calm and without flutter, when asked why she was standing there, she said, I'm eating peanut butter. <laughs> My bike days are simple. They're not easy for me, but I love the simplicity. I ride from the start to the finish. I wear the same bike clothing every day. I pedal. And I really like that single focus. It's so obvious that each day's efforts are moving me on down the road to where I want to go. On my first ride, there were 27 of us, and we were all brand new to bike tripping. 
we had none of us had ever ridden on a trip before and none of us knew each other and over the weeks we found that we didn't even have any mutual acquaintances our bike company told us that this trip would change our lives so that became the joke especially the second half of the trip it was so has your life changed yet <laughs> has your life changed yet and when I got to the Atlantic Ocean and I dipped my tire in that Atlantic Ocean water, having crossed the continent, I thought, this was a great trip and my, I haven't changed. And a couple of years later, after I had done a couple more trips, I asked one of my sons, have I changed since I started doing these rides? And he thought, and he said, I think you view your life with a greater sense of possibility. And I do. I have a far greater sense of possibility, and that expands my view of my life. I started this adventure when I was 60. I am a very ordinary person, and I've had extraordinary adventures by riding one day, one mile, one pedal stroke at a time. My bike trips have been the biggest one day at a life, one day at a time in my life lesson. When I stood in California and I thought about how far away Florida was, whew, and I was planning on getting there by bicycle, I thought, impossible. And all I had to do was ride today's ride and today's ride and today's ride. I've learned that it's never too late to say yes to bigger things by making the commitment, by asking for help, by bringing some humor to the day, and by working and connecting with others. I've achieved dreams I never would have thought possible. And I have one more. I'm out here riding, riding my bike. And at this moment, I'd rather hitchhike. <laughs> Always a challenge, but today it is worse. These are the days that stretch me for verse. Is it worth all the hard work? I wonder as I go. And then when my ride ends, I know it is so. Here is a question, a question for me. Why do I do this? It sets my soul free. <laughs> it sets my soul free. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.